there are certain people you come across in life that are truly inspirational on, num on a number of levels. But uh, a medical doctor, pilot is one of such of those people. Well, uh, Orla Brown, Dr. Orla Brown's startup story is truly remarkable. She was originally born in London, grew up in a foster home with her sister in a small seaside town of uh, Lowestoft, if I get that right, in the southeast uh, part of England. However, the catalyst for a major life and career decision came well, when her sister became very, very ill on a holiday while staying uh, with relatives in Nigeria. Well, Flying Doctors is a medical emergency service that specializes in air ambulances, um, medevac, medio logistics services, remote sites, medical solutions, and all of that medical training services. An award-winning service at the first indigenous air ambulance in West Africa in operation for almost 10 years. Well, she started with uh, to study evacuation models and air ambulance services in other developing countries before launching our ambitious entrepreneurial venture, Flying Nigeria's, a uh, Flying Doctor Nigeria's Limited, which today enables her to combine her deep love for medicine and uh, Africa with her growing passion for flying. Well, Ola is here in the studio, Dr. Ola Brown, uh, founder of Flying Doctors Nigeria. Thank you very much. Thank you. I can remember when I saw you at the NESG and all yeah. of that. It's been, I've been meeting you and I said, no, you must be here to tell us. <laughs> Thank you. T tell us how it's been, the Nigerian factor. When you came in, mm -hmm. how did it look growing your own establishment, your business, starting up? How was it really like? Um, I think that it was a really interesting discussion um, with the researcher from SSD, um, okay. FSDH, actually, because he yes. highlighted some of the problems of entrepreneurship. And I think some of the major problems are sort of he touched on in his discussion so whenever any young person um, wants to start a business i think um, one of the main issues is sort of access to the right kind of training what kind of business schools do we have here what kind of educational system do we have here what kind of um, sort of support systems do we have for business um, even the process of starting a business and registering a business is is quite opaque um, and then from the um, fiscal policy point of view, our tax regime, for instance, um, encourages people to spend their money. So um, our, we, we pay 30% of profit in Nigeria, which means that people are less encouraged to keep residuals and reinvest into the business. So when I see, you know, when I first moved to Nigeria and I started seeing people get like, for example, a contract for 10 million, and they spend the whole 10 million. I'd be like, why is that? But nobody wants to pay 30% of their profit, so it's better to spend it, right? <laughs> so I think that there's some um, issues in sort of our tax um, policy that prevent people from growing business because there's two ways. You either use your external capital or you use your internal capital. But who is going to keep internally generated capital when you have to pay 30% of it at the end of the year? It's better that you spend it. So people, I think, are um, encouraged not to keep residuals because of our tax. And then there's access to capital externally as well. I mean, um, it's interesting that the MPC has held, and I was hoping um, for an interest rate cut or an easing of the Everybody CRR. Um, and uh, neither of those things have happened. So even at the height of the recession, we still had high interest rates. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, it was quite interesting to see that what um, would normally happen, what would normally be expected is a more expansive monetary policy. But we actually didn't see that in Nigeria at the height of our recession. Um, we still kept quite a restrictive yeah. Yeah. Um, monetary policy. And this affects entrepreneurs, SMEs, more than any other group of people. Mm -hmm. So in the developed world, you see a very different shape of businesses to what you see um, in, in Nigeria. Nigeria. So in, in, in the um, d developed world, you see micro businesses, actually quite a small number, so somewhere down here. And then you see SMEs making up the bulk of the businesses. And then the sort of macro businesses, the huge conglomerates, making up a much smaller population. Mm -hmm. In Nigeria, you see a huge number of micro businesses and then a completely missing middle where SMEs are supposed to be. And then we get up to uh, my Mr. Aliko and Femi Otedola with a lot of big, it goes back up for the big businesses. So there's a huge missing middle um, in, the, um, in the Nigerian context where SMEs are supposed to be. Really? But because of this restrictive monetary policy that we have, they're unable to grow. And because they're unable to grow, we have high unemployment. And because we have high unemployment, we have all these problems with crime, with terrorism, etc., which I think could be eased if actually people had something to do. 
Yeah. But, but, but many have claimed that this is because um, the kind of growth we experience. Yes, in figures we had growth. But they are saying the kind of growth we experience as for experts, that it's fragile. That's why they might still have to tighten up all of this. It's not um, just fragile, it's virtually non existent. I don't count that as growth. I serious? think that yes, I think that it's about one point. Yeah, I think that I, I think that we should not look at GDP growth. I think mm. we should look at our growth compared to our we potential are, GDP growth and our productivity. And if you look at productivity, then you'll see that Nigeria is actually one of the most unproductive countries in the world mm. in terms of the GDP per hour that we generate. That is what it, it's one of the most product, un, unproductive. So you see com, uh, countries that are generating a hundred dollars. Nigeria is about three dollars. And then when you look at also other factors like the growth rate compared to the rate of growth of the population, you'll see that we're growing at 0.5 percent and the population is growing at four percent. That means that actually we're all getting poorer every day in Nigeria. So really we need to really look at our fiscal uh, monetary policy and look at the role of the banks very carefully because the banks are supposed to be the engine of the economy and funding SMEs. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, um, so what you asked me, I think your original question before I went into yeah, yeah, a whole analysis was about, um, was about the challenges, yes, the challenges um, yeah. in growth of business. Yeah, and I think yeah. access to finance, access to training, access to business service support are probably the three challenges that I faced and probably any entrepreneur in Nigeria would face until they have decent cash flows. So by the the time I was in year three, year four of my business, actually, then you can approach the bank because there's money. But at that time, do you really need it? When you're collateralizing against cash and you're taking 10% out for what you want to do operationally, is that really banking? Well, I think it's called, we call it magic banking on social media where <laughs> you, you have collateralized cash anyway, a fixed deposit, and you need a small proportion of the cash that you already have to do operations. And they borrow you and use that money to collateralize it, like 10% of the money you need to do some small things. Is that really banking? Are they really taking any risk? I don't, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> I, I, I don't think so. Now, how were you able to, that didn't discourage you and all of that. You still went on and on and on. Where did that strength come from? How did you get it right? I think a big part of entrepreneurship is about mindset. Mm. Um, a big part of entrepreneurship for me is about, um, and what, what I explain to people is it sounds a bit soft, right? Oh, your mindset. It sounds like I'm reading from some motivational, inspirational novel. But actually, I think that um, a, a sense of self-belief and a sense of confidence is important for any entrepreneur because you've got to believe in the impossible. I read one um, definition of entrepreneurship that really resonated with me. And the person said that um, entrepreneurship is a belief in a defined result. Re, um, regardless of resources currently controlled. So you know that you don't control the resources to reach your dream. You know you don't have those resources personally, but you believe in that you're going to get the result you want despite the fact that you don't have the resources yeah. to make it. So it is really, even embedded in that definition of entrepreneurship is a mindset issue. So because um, I wasn't having such a great time in England um, financially, um, and I wasn't feeling very fulfilled um, as well, I um, made a decision to um, come to Nigeria and see if I could make a difference in the healthcare system. So one of the things that really, really bugged me was um, when I was in medical school, um, we're trying to organize an air ambulance for my sister and um, she ended up dying during the process because it was the air ambulance, the air ambulance that we got was in South Africa, so it was going to take days to come. And that was a very upsetting um, event for me. So um, I really, it made me, start to think about how I could do something in Nigeria, how I could do something across Africa that would help the healthcare system. And in addition to that, um, I saw an economic opportunity as well. Um, in England, um, I guess myself, um, most of the people that we hung around with um, in England belong to a sort of underclass. So uh, very low end jobs, very low prospects um, in the Nigerian society in w that we operated. Whereas their equivalents, people that they went to school with um, in Nigeria were becoming senators, were bank managers, were governors. So, um, I mean, I, one of my um, friend's dads, for instance, he was a doctor in England and somebody in his class was a sitting governor. So I was thinking, you know, in terms of economic prospects, there must be an opportunity as well. Um, so when I finished my training, um, I decided to give it a go. And I think there was a huge mindset component mm. to that. I believed that, you know, if I was in England, I would end up like that Nigerian society 
uh, kind of average day to day. And if I moved to Nigeria, then I would have a chance to have a really big business yeah. and be successful. So um, I think it was my intrinsic belief in where I would be mm. able to mm. uh, make the most difference, make the most impact, and also um, sort of take advantage of the most economic opportunity um, that helped me become successful in my business. Oh, 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 almost finally, I, I think this government is trying as much as possible to make business, doing business, moving all around easy. I don't know if you've seen any, has it affected you one way or the other? Um, I think that sometimes high level policy interventions in Abuja take a while to trickle down to the SMEs. I think that they benefit the um, more um, larger businesses a lot quicker than they benefit SMEs. So I think that um, perhaps there should be um, more consultation with small mm -hmm. to medium sized businesses mm -hmm. as well as the larger businesses. Because I notice whenever there's a government um, council or government uh, sort of business, ease of doing business council, uh, you know, uh, Dan Gotti is chairing it. I mean, it's very, very different. It's a very, very different set of, you know, worries, a very, very different set of um, um, concerns yeah. that small to medium sized businesses actually have. And um, I think it's very difficult. It would be very, very difficult for somebody as big as Dangote to be able to relate to the struggles that uh, SME has. But what we need in Nigeria right now is not more big businesses. We need more SMEs. Because SMEs, you know, um, there's, a, um, there's a very good study, I think it's by the Kaufman Institute, that shows that um, large businesses actually, especially the multinationals, don't create any new jobs. The growth in jobs, the growth in GDP, actually relies on these small to medium-sized businesses, which at the moment, I think are being pretty neglected. I tell you that. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 but before we end this, you know, Tango, we, we, we talked, talked about the NPC thing when we started. What would mm. be your advice? When do you expect maybe a change of rate or something? Um, I would, I am in no, I'm a student of medicine yeah, and I'm a scientist. Yeah. So I'm in no, <laughs> yeah, no position to businesses. advise our respected bankers yeah. and um, economists. But I speak as a business person. Yeah, exactly. And That's I think that goal. if you want, seriously want to grow um, the SME sector, you want to make it easier for businesses to do, um, to grow in Nigeria, especially in this uh, small to medium sized business, then you must cross you must cut interest rates and you must release the CR, um, CRR so people, uh, so the banks also have more liquidity to yeah. fund businesses. And in addition to this, you might release the CRR and then the banks will just have more money to put in treasury bills. We don't want that because I actually read that in the past three months, the banks have borrowed more money from CBN, like about 100% more money from CBN than they did last year. But that money is not going to businesses. It's going back, back <laughs> to buy treasury years. bills to make what So we, we, we can't have that magic banking it must go into the sme sector if we really want to grow the economy and create jobs dr ola brown founder <laughs> fly doctors of nigeria you can go on and on i can know that thank you very much for joining thank us you on business nigeria at least i took you through the uh, world of um, the economic issues and before we now look straight into entrepreneurship in general thank you for joining thank us thank you on the show. it's really nice having you